everyone, this is Ranger Rob, and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Channel, where we do daily videos, and we talk about homesteading and prepping, and, and, uh, what the heck else we talk about? <laughs> Preparing food, being good people, and, uh, checking out if Central Oregon is having another sparkling day, and it truly is a sparkling day in Central Oregon. And today we're gonna kind of focus on your freezer. <laughs> That's right. So uh, today uh, I just got a shipment in from a new company that ships uh, uh, beef and I uh, thought I'd give them a try. I have uh, I have a hard time pronouncing the name of the company so I'll put it on the screen when uh, the next segment comes up. Uh, I do use Butcher Block Box been very happy with that and my goal is is that one of my weaker areas is having a good supply of beef and uh, I'm getting there I'm getting there pr pretty fast but not you know whatever my uh, budget can uh, afford and uh, uh, so I thought I'd kind of do a little tour and also show you uh, the package I just got in and show you a tour of what we're doing with our freezers and hopefully it'll give you guys some ideas for building up your pantry and your freezer capacity and extra food just in case things get a little bit out of control well guys i'm trying out another meat company now you guys know that we use a, a butcher box um, but i'm trying another company uh ordered 10 pounds of meat all uh, steaks and stuff like that from a company called Agridime, I believe it's called. I'll put it on the screen so you guys can see how it's spelled. I probably hashed that up pretty bad. But uh, let's open this box up and see what I got. All right, so this is what the box looks like. Uh, I got my receipt at the top, um, insulation in it. Oh my gosh. Wow, this thing's packed kind of unusual. Um, interesting. So, um, on my invoice here, this is what they call, um, well, it doesn't say on here, but, um, I'll just kind of pull stuff out and let you see. Uh, these are, uh, ribeye steaks. Okay. And uh, another another ribeye. Uh, tenderloins. I believe that's the same. Should be a lot of steak in here, so I'm looking forward to trying these out. Uh, that's another tenderloin. Uh, these are. Uh, beef, beef New York strips. Another New York strip. Wow, this is this is really nice. Um, another tenderloin. These are really nice cuts of meat. Another ribeye. Another ribeye. I love ribeyes. I think that's another New York. Yep. Um, another New York. Wow. Another New York. <laughs> and there's more. And. Another New York. But wait, there's more. Also, uh, another Tenderloin. And yes, there's more. This stuff's cold. Uh, another Tenderloin. It's five. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, another New York, and 
One more tenderloin. So, uh, wow, these are cold. Sorry, I gotta move the camera around. So, that was quite a haul. So, lots of New Yorks, lots of ribeyes, tenderloins, and uh, I feel like the value is pretty good here compared to Butcher Box. So, what did I pay? Butcher Box, I pay, when you've seen me unload those, $149. They just raised their price to $159. This was uh, $155. And uh, I'm actually quite pleased with it. This is the, you know, Sherry and I like steaks. And so, uh, I mean, uh, I go to Costco now and they're, we're paying up to $13 a pound. So, uh, yes, the prices of meat are going up. But uh, if you can't make it to Costco, or you live a long ways from Costco or something, um, or you have a grocery store that doesn't uh, provide very good meat, uh, this is all grass-fed meat. So, very exciting. Uh, I'm going to take these out to the freezer, and I'll just feel that much better knowing I got a little bit more in the freezer. All right, guys, I'm out in my shop. This is where I keep my freezer for beef only. Uh, slowly getting it filled up. Uh, with a lot of beef. I have a a quarter of a beef that I ordered, a lot of hamburgers and stuff. Uh, as far as quality steaks and stuff like that, that's what I'm kind of building on. So I get a lot of, uh, ah, um, kind of hard to see, but that's my butcher block, block stuff. And a lot of my hamburger is down below. And, uh, also, steaks that we buy in quantity at uh, Costco that we uh, package ourselves. So I'm going to add that the new stuff in, and I'm just going to feel that much better that my freezer's sitting kind of pretty for beef. So uh, you guys know I always talk about prepping when I can. And uh, I like chest freezers because if uh, our electricity was out and I had to use a generator, I don't have to necessarily run the freezers on the generator the whole time because if I run them for a few hours, everything's frozen well, cold air stays low, I can let my chest freezers sit for quite a few hours before I have to put them back on electricity. Uh, this is another one of our freezers. This is kind of our working freezer. So like here are chicken eggs that are ready to go into the freeze dryer. And we keep a lot of our miscellaneous meats in here. I do have some beef ribs and stuff in here too, but uh, we keep a lot of our eggs, frozen eggs, uh, pretty much pork type things in here. And uh, uh, just our miscellaneous bacon, things like that in this freezer. It's kind of a the one we work out of all the time. This freezer here, just a little chest freezer is my chicken and it's full. And uh, I've worked really hard to have a good chicken supply. I do buy a lot of chicken wings too um, uh, because Sherry loves chicken wings. Anyway, but I'm really happy with my supply in chicken. I'm pretty happy with my pork and I'm getting much more happier with my beef. And uh, so yeah, like I said, I practice what I preach. And I don't do it all at once. I wish I could fill those up immediately. But you know, as well as I do, it costs money. So you just do what you can while you can. All right, guys, so well, I'm back in uh, the back 40. <laughs> Be the back five, I guess. And uh, I know I keep kind of telling you, I was gonna check and see if the ceramic eggs are making a difference. And uh, we are definitely starting to get eggs over on this side. I still think it has actually more to do with temperature. I think it's because the sun hits this area, it gets warmer than the other side here. Because, uh, let's see what we got for eggs over here. So, uh, yeah, they're kind of spread out right now. And, uh, but, uh, it was kind of interesting to see if the ceramic eggs really did make that big a difference. Sherry suggested we just get three more ceramic eggs and just put them in all six. And uh, maybe next time I'm at uh, uh, the feed store, I might pick up a few more just to try that out. 
and make sure that they're spreading out and so I don't have chickens on top of one another trying to fight for their uh, nesting area. So yeah, uh, today I got to uh, check on tanks and uh, I just turned on the water for the, uh, the corn over here. Uh, I didn't water them yesterday because I, if you remember, if you watched the video, I uh, ran the uh, water way too long, so I figured the ground was pretty saturated, so I gave it an extra day to evaporate a little more. And uh, working our way over to the uh, towers, strawberry towers, getting lots of strawberries lately. And uh, I think I might have to uh, refill this tank and uh, I would be correct in assuming that. So uh, later on today, before tomorrow, because it's already ran this morning, uh, I gotta refill this tank. It holds about 35 gallons of nutrients to feed all these nice little strawberries. Oh my gosh. That's really, that's, it's calling out my name. You better test it. Yum. So I don't want you to ever forget, anytime I test anything in the garden, I have always have a helper. My dog, all my dogs are so spoiled. Yeah, one other thing is, uh, I told you that we grow radishes here, and we usually grow a couple of carrots uh, in the lower halves of these towers. I just pulled all the carrots out to make a salad. I planted these radishes. These are supposed to be giant radishes. <laughs> I like to try different radishes. And they're already uh, sprouting. So that was amazing, it was quick. So radishes are amazing. It pretty much, if you can't grow anything, you can probably grow radishes. And uh, so if you ever wanna try growing something and be successful right away, grow radishes, you, you, you can't go wrong. And they're good. I was still checking over the garden here a little bit. You know, I always got to pick up something for the dogs. So here's my pups. Can you guys sit pretty? All right. There's one for you guys. They love their beans. So I want to talk about tomatoes for a minute. So uh, I got a, a lot of beautiful tomatoes. And I put a message into Homegrown Passions, which has a, a Dutch bucket systems like ours. And I asked them basically, how do you keep your tomatoes from cracking? Because what happens is they get to a certain point like this, and then out of the blue, the next day they'll crack. And she said, and she says, well, this is what we believe is to make sure that they, the, the tomatoes don't get too thirsty. So what she's saying is, if, in Dutch bucket system, we uh, use perlite because we want the roots to, to dry up to get oxygen. And then there is water at the lower section of the buckets so they can still tap into nutrients. But they're saying if they're really thirsty, and the water comes on, if they start pushing water through their veins, you might say, quite quickly, and so tends to uh, cause your tomatoes to crack um, during the uh, ripening time. And so I can't disagree with that. So what I decided to do is I, I turned on a few more cycles over here on our timer so I get a few more watering times, especially during the warm periods of the day. Uh, they're still like three hours apart. Uh, and, and then I'm gonna keep a really close lookout on my tomatoes to see if, uh, cause you know, we still get quite a few tomatoes that crack, um, not all of them. And now with this cooler weather, I'm actually seeing my tomatoes uh, not cracking as much. And so that might be proof of concept right there is it's cooler and they're not sucking up so much water. So uh, 
Anyway, I'll watch it really closely. If I'm overwatering, the plants will tell me. You can kind of see it in their leaves. One thing we've learned about growing at all is let the plants communicate to you. Watch your plants. They will tell you if something's wrong or if something's good. So uh, that's really something you have to learn right off the bat is if the plants are drooping or their leaves are curling or they're discoloring or they're yellow, they're telling you something and just pay attention. And so anyway, I want to thank um, Homegrown Passions for their suggestion and uh, we're going to give it a try and, and, and see if that works. Well, I guess uh, a couple more tanks all filled up. Uh, got the Dutch bucket system all filled up. Everything's good. Uh, corn's still watering. I just sit down for a couple of minutes and I'll shut it down so I don't flood it again. And I kind of noticed we had a wind shift a little bit. So we're starting to get a little more smoky. I don't know if you can kind of tell, but uh, yeah, it's just relentless. So guys, I'm gonna wrap it up right here. I wanna thank you very much for watching. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos. Sharing really helps. So if you would, hit that share button, send it off to some groups that maybe you uh, pay attention to, or put it on your own Facebook page. We'd appreciate that. So guys, have a great day. Be safe. Until next time, bye now. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.